Hi, it's Lori with Angels in the Garden. How are you today? As you can see, my wall is totally bare. My house is, I probably sound echoey. It's because we've sold our house and we're in the process of moving, but I wanted to cut this video for you um, to finish up our June blog posts about annuals, perennials, biennials, and then putting them all together. So if you haven't um, seen the blog posts, I will put links um, to each week's blog post on this um, article that's bringing it all together so you can look at them at your leisure in separate um, sections. So what I want to do is I want to create um, a flower garden putting the annuals, perennials, and biennials all together into a section of your garden. And so I've created this garden and it's in green and I'm going to go over it in red and hopefully you can see it. But if you want to follow along and make your own um, diagram, then grab a piece of paper and grab a pen or a pencil, pencil preferred because you can erase. Um, grab your journal if you journal or just find a piece of scrap paper somewhere. So I wanted to first start with our first blog post, it was about annuals, and in that article I had listed a bunch of annuals that um, I like and that are out there. It's certainly not all annuals that you have a choice from, and again, you want to make sure that um, what annual you pick, or actually any flower that you pick is native to your area. So I'm going to also put a link to our free garden zone map, you'll want to grab that for sure. So what I've done is I first start with my annuals. And I am going to um, put the annuals, because most annuals are low growing. Well, I shouldn't say that, but what I create, so what I've created is low growing annuals. So I want my marigolds down here at the bottom. I have a marigold here. And I picked um, yellow marigolds. I love the yellow marigold, and I want um, my garden to be um, symmetrical, if you will. You can do rainbow colors. You know, you can do yellow, orange, yellow, orange, or you can do yellow, and they have tiger-looking marigolds. So whatever you want to do. So I put a marigold here. I left a space, and then I put a, another marigold plant here. And then I've left a space, and then I put another marigold here. And again, these are all yellow marigolds. I left a space, because we're going to put something in this space um, in a few minutes. I'll show you what I've decided to put in this particular garden. And we're going to put a yellow marigold here, and then a space. So you can decide how big this section of your garden is. It can be a 6x4, four, 4x6. Four it can be a a container garden, so just a little 4x4, four four, whatever you want. So depending on how many plants you have will depend on how big or small the space is. Um, so these are my annuals. Uh, let's see if I put any more annuals. That's all I did for annuals. Now I want to um, add perennials. Now as you know, annuals are just for that particular season. Perennials you plant, you plant once and they grow. Some of them you'll have to divide because they kind of get really big. If you put shrubs here, you'll have to um, trim up the shrub. Now whether you want to trim it like a tree or trim it like a sh clean cut shrub, it's again up to you. Um, so what I've done is I put cone flowers. I put cone flowers here. And I like the purple pinky cone flowers. And I put cone flowers here. And I put another plant here. So I've got three cone flowers. And what cone flowers do is this is what I recommend cone flowers. Do not cut back or trim or anything. Let them die off by themselves for two reasons. The birds love the seeds. And secondly, they'll germinate and they'll just spread like crazy, which is beautiful clusters of cone flowers and they attract honey, uh, butterflies. Perfect. And then what I've done in my corners, I created a corner garden. So this is my corner, top corner, this is my top corner, and what I've done in the corners is I've put purple clematis vines. 
Now you got what you got to remember about clematis vines is the root needs to be in the shade. The ball, the end, the root where where your plant starts in the grass that needs to be in the shade. Uh, excuse me, in your dirt that needs to be in the shade, and the rest of the plant that's growing up as a vine needs to be in the sun. And I've also put a purple clematis vine over here because me I like uh, symmetry. I like the same colors. And I like colors that go together, that really uh, look great together. Um, remember, clematis vine, the root ball, has to be in the shade if you want a ginormous, beautiful clematis vine. Now, with clematis vines, um, you can choose to cut them back in the fall um, when it's done blooming, or you can choose to leave it. I personally like to choose to leave it because I want it to continue to like grow the whole length of my fence over my pool house um, roof. If you cut it back, it just kind of gets full and grows only so tall for that particular season. And then um, in the middle here, I've only added one bleeding heart. Right here. Now again, bleeding heart in the middle between the clematis vine and the two clematis vines. There's a space here and a space here, and I'll show you why in a second, but I put a bleeding heart in the middle. Now, again, remember, bleeding hearts need at least partial shade. The, uh, if you leave them in the sun, the, the leaves will get burnt and turn a yellowy, limey, browny, green. They don't like full, full sun. They like partial shade um, to really all shade. Uh, so that's why I stuck my bleeding heart in the back on this particular diagram. Now, those are my perennials. Now for my biannuals, now if you remember in my blog post, my biannuals are um, every other year. So if you plant the biennial plant this season, you won't get flowers um, until the following summer. So remember I left a space in between the marigolds? Now these I'm going to put my forget-me-nots um, right here, right here, right here, and right here. So I have a marigold, forget-me-not, marigold, forget-me-not, marigold, forget-me-not, marigold, forget-me-not, because this is the size of my garden. And then I decided to add, in between the clematis vine and the bleeding hearts, I decided to add foxglove. They grow tall, so I wanted them in the back. So I want smaller, low-growing plants in the front to gradually get high in the back. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful landscape flower garden when you do that. And then you can see everything that you put in there. So these are my foxgloves. So remember, I have my clematis vine, foxglove, bleeding heart, then I put foxglove, and then clematis vine. Um, now, I also put up here an, an asterisk English ivy. English ivy, I think, will look good um, all in between this, all, you know, where the bare spots are. The only thing is, is that's a high-maintenance uh, plant. It is very invasive, so you have to keep an eye on it and keep trimming it if you're going to do that. So you decide. Um, or maybe wherever this garden is, you have um, a nice oak tree over, over it a little bit, say five feet or more over there. English ivy around that base of that oak tree is absolutely beautiful. Just keep an eye on it that it doesn't crawl over to this part of your garden. So I hope that helped you put um, all your annuals, perennials, and biennials together. This was um, for the month of June. Um, topic that we talked about. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below if this helped you or, or if you had a question. So I hope you have a great day. Happy gardening. Happy birding. And on, and on that thought, before I let you go, now you can do some finishing touches in here. You can add um, a birdhouse. You can add a decorative flag. Um, uh, oh, there's so many choices. Um, take a look at our website and, and grab what you need and grab what you want. And again, I hope you have a great day. Happy gardening and happy birding. Um, we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.